In the last six years, I've read 482 books on making money, investing, business, and personal development. In this video, I'm going to share with you, number one, the reasons why I believe it is important to read and read a lot. Number two, I'm gonna share with you all the tips and tricks and secrets that I use to read 100 books every single year. And then number three, I'm gonna share with you the 12 books that if I could only read 12 books ever again, I would choose these 12 books if my goal was to study books that would help me make as much money as possible. And these ones I'm gonna share with you are the 12 best books I've ever read on making money. Now it's true that I read 100 books per year now, but it did not start off that way. In fact, I remember when I was a kid, I actually did not like reading at all. I always felt like I should be reading. And I remember growing up, my older sister, she was constantly reading books. And so it instilled the sense in me that I should be reading. But it wasn't until I was an adult that I actually decided, hey, I need to start reading. And so the year was 2017 when I decided decided that I was going to become a reader. Because before that, I had always tried to read, but there's a qualitative difference between trying to do something and deciding to do something. When you try or attempt to do something, you're saying, hey, I'm going to commit to some actions and then the result will be whatever it is. But when you decide or commit to an outcome instead, then you're saying, hey, I'm going to have this result happen and it may take a bunch of different things to get there, but I'm going to do whatever it takes. These are two very different things. And so I decided to become a reader. The way I did that was in 2017, I decided I was going to read one book a month, which got me to 12 books by the end of 2017, which for me was an all time record. But once I was able to accomplish reading one book a month, every month for an entire year, I realized I could actually do more. And so for 2018, I upped my personal goal to 36 books, which would be three books per month. I came very close, 2018, I got to 34 books. So the next year I bumped my goal up again and I said, I'm gonna read one book every single week, four bucks a month, I'm gonna reach 50 books by the end of the year. And for the last couple of years, I've been reading 100 books per year consistently. This is actually the spreadsheet that I used to use to track literally every single book that I read as a way to give me a trophy or a shelf, a checkbox to mark off because just being able to say, hey, I hit my goal, gave me the motivation I needed to continue reading. Now I don't do that anymore because it's just a habit. I don't need that to motivate me to read anymore. But as of right now, I've read just about 482 books and the vast majority of them have been about money, investing, business, or personal development. Now, if you're keeping track, it took me almost four years to build up the reading muscles that it takes to read 100 books a year. And so if you're sitting there thinking, ah, that time is daunting. That's such a long amount of time to wait to get to where I wanna go. Well, guess what? the time will pass anyway. So never be discouraged by the amount of time it'll take you to get where you wanna go because that time is going to come and go no matter what. Now, the next question that needs to be answered is why is it important to read? And the number one reason why it's important to read is because leaders are readers and readers are leaders. When you look at every single person who has had big influence in the world and built up a legacy and made a bunch of money, almost every single one of them is a massive reader. And as long as you're not reading just fiction books for entertainment, then it's true that the more you learn, Learn, the more you earn. I'm sure you've all heard the adage that you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time around. Well, it's also true that you can choose to spend your time around successful people who make a lot of money and great investors and great leaders of the past by simply reading their biographies, reading their stories, reading their books, telling you what to do and what not to do and what mistakes they made and what pitfalls you should avoid. By studying their lives and listening to their advice, you can reprogram program yourself, even if you don't know these people in real life, you can reprogram your brain to think like these people and follow the actions and the habits that they take to make yourself more successful. Now, if I were starting off today with zero reading habits and I wanted to become a reader, I would start by setting an achievable goal. For some people that literally might be read two books this year, set a goal, with the only requirement being that goal is low enough that you can actually achieve it. Because once you start something, then over time you can improve it, but you can never improve on something unless you start it first. The second trick that I would have started using a lot earlier, which is the way I'm able to read 100 books per year right now, is by using audiobooks. And before I show you how powerful audiobooks are, I want to address the objection that audiobooks are not really reading. This study done back in 2016 took 91 participants who received 
received instructions and a book in either audiobook form, text form, or they could use both at the same time. After they read, they had to take a reading comprehension test. The analysis found that both men and women retained an equal amount of information regardless of whether they just listened or whether they read with their eyes or they used both simultaneously. This has been proven time and time again. There is statistically no difference in comprehension and retention, whether you read with your ears or read with your eyes. Now, the reason why I prefer to read audiobooks is because you can listen to them on 3X speed. Now, that's not true of all authors and all narrators, but almost every narrator you can listen on at least 2X speed, which means for an average 10 hour book, you can get through it in five hours. If you can play it on 3X speed, you can get through it in a little over three hours. Now, if reading one book in a little over three hours still sounds like too much time for you, it's because you're not considering found time. Especially with audiobooks, you can listen on your commute. I personally listen while I work out, while I run, and while I drive. Between just those three things, I'm able to have enough found time in a year to read 100 books with audiobooks. You can also include things like when you're cleaning up, doing dishes, cooking. If you include the Kindle version of the book as well, you can read it while you're doing things like waiting in line or going to the bathroom. And if you consider that the average adult in the United States spends almost four hours per day watching TV and younger generations are spending that same amount of time on social media or YouTube or Netflix, you start to realize how many hours in the day are wasted doing things that you can replace with reading if you actually want. To. And I personally credit these next 12 books that I'm going to share with you with assisting me in every single large or significant increase in income or wealth along my journey. They don't do it for you, but sometimes it's helpful to have somebody point to you where the next step is. All right, so if I could only read 12 books again, the first book that I would choose on my list is Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits by James Clear is the single best book you could choose to give you the tools you need to to improve your life in any area, whether that's income or something else. One of my favorite quotes from this book is, new goals don't deliver new results. New lifestyles do. And a lifestyle is not an outcome, it's a process. For this reason, all of your energy should go into building better rituals, not chasing better results. He also highlights the importance of starting small and then improving along the way. Because every time you improve just a little bit, you're improving off of your past improvements. Consider that if you take one and you multiply it by one 365 times, you are not improving at all. You are just doing one over and over again. At the end, you're still left with one. This is the idea of doing the same thing over and over again every single day without ever trying to improve. You're in the same place you were before. But if you improve by just 1% every single day, that means you're taking one and multiplying it by 1.01 every single day for 365 days straight. After doing that consistently every day for a year, you are at 37.7. The next book on my list is The Almanac of Naval Ravikant. Now, this is technically a book, but it is a collection of explanations that came from one of Naval's tweet storms back in 2018 that blew up, called How to Get Rich Without Getting Lucky. Some of my favorite chapter topics from this book are understand that ethical wealth creation is possible possible. If you secretly despise wealth, it will elude you. And you get rich by giving society what it wants, but does not yet know how to get at scale. And finally, fortunes require leverage. Business leverage comes from capital, people, and products with no marginal cost of replication, which comes from either code or media. This book is packed full of wisdom and real actionable steps you can take to improve your income and your wealth. The next book on my list is Skin in the Game by Nassim Nicholas Taleb. Now I will say this one, I'm kind of cheating because this is the book that I'm choosing. However, any of his books are absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend all of them. Black Swan, Anti-Fragile, Skin in the Game are my three favorite, but Skin in the Game sits at the top for me. My favorite quote from the book is, finally, when young people who want to help mankind come to me asking, what should I do? I want to reduce poverty. I want to save the world and similar noble aspirations at the macro level. My suggestion is number one, never engage in virtue signaling. Number two, never engage in rent seeking. You must start a business, put yourself on the line, start a business. Years ago, Gallup did a poll around the entire world, even in poverty stricken places like India. And do you know what the number one need was that people self identified? Not food, not water, jobs. Humans do not like handouts. Humans do not like being dependent 
on other humans. Humans want the dignity of being able to provide for themselves and for their families. If you want to make a difference in this world and actually help people, create jobs. You're creating real wealth. You're creating income. You're engaging in voluntary association and voluntary exchange, giving somebody else things that they want more than the money that they're giving up, both people profiting. And never engage in rent seeking, which is where your income is the result of you being a parasite on society or on the taxpayer. The next book on my list is $100 million Offers by Alex Hormozzi. His other book, $100 million Leads, is fantastic as well, but $100 million Offers stands out even higher to me. This is the single best business book I have ever read and that I I would recommend to anybody if you could only read one business book forever, one to study and read over and over again. And I have read this one over and over again. The subtitle is the summary, which is how to make offers so good people feel stupid saying no. Because of what I learned and applied from $100 million offers, I was able to take Heresy Financial University from $10,000 per month in June of 2023 to over six figures every month by the end of 2023. And most of that came down to simply making the product better. And if you're interested in joining Heresy Financial University right now, I'm currently running a limited use discount code. The code is new year, new me. It gives you 50% off for all payments every single year in perpetuity. And there are a limited number of these coupons available. When they run out, they are gone. Code new year, new me, jump on it now, it's gonna run out quick. The next book on my list is The Fiat Standard. Now, I'm cheating again because he's also written The Bitcoin Standard and Principles of Economics, and they're both absolutely fantastic. The Fiat Standard does happen to be my favorite of the three. Saifedean Amus is an amazing author, able to break down very complex economic topics in a nuanced way and explain them very clearly. If you want a firm grasp of economic Economics from how money works, the history of money, the positives and negatives to different types of financial systems throughout history, where we are today and why, and the alternatives going forward into the future. I cannot recommend anything more highly than Saifedean Amus's The Fiat Standard. Understanding how the economy works is one of the key foundations you need to be able to invest successfully long term. And nobody does that better than him. The next book on my list is Principles for Navigating Big Debt Crises by Ray Dalio. If you're not familiar with Ray Dalio, he is is the founder of Bridgewater that is the largest hedge fund in the world. Extremely successful long-term investor and business builder and a lot of his investing success comes from his studying of past debt crises and financial cycles. He has written two other books, one on principles, just leadership and life in general. That one's pretty good. And then another book called The Changing World Order. That one is very good as well. But my favorite of his three books is Big Debt Crises. Absolutely essential if you want to have success investing into the future, especially in an uncertain and unstable world where we're not exactly sure where things are going with the dollar, reigning superpowers around the world, inflation, hyperinflation. And we understand how to see ahead by looking at those things, how they unfolded in the past. The next book on my list is Market Wizards by Jack Schwager or Schwager, I'm not sure, but there are a bunch of these books. He's got unknown Market Wizards, the original Market Wizards, the new Market Wizards, hedge fund market wizards, stock market wizards, a little book of market wizards. And essentially what Jack did here was he went around and interviewed all of the most successful investors and traders since like the 80s, asking them questions about their number one rule, their investing do's and don'ts, their biggest mistakes, the most amount of money they've made. And the reason why I think these books are so vital is because once you read 12, 20, 30 of these interviews, you start to realize there's some massive patterns some very identifiable similarities between all of the most successful investors and traders throughout history. Risk management is number one for every single one of them. None of them ever open themselves up to large losses. Now, they all mitigate those risks of losses in different ways, but that's all of them. That's their number one rule. And so I highly recommend studying these market wizards through Jack Schwager's books. And if you're going to start with any of them, I'd start with the original. Market Wizards. The next book on the list is Safe Haven, Investing for Financial Storms by Mark Spitznagel. Mark Spitznagel runs Universa. It's a hedge fund that him and Nassim Taleb, if you remember, 
He was the author of the books that I recommended before, Anti-Fragile, Black Swan, and Skin in the Game. And Safe Haven is specifically about how to protect your assets during volatile times or from large drawdowns. He just shreds modern portfolio theory and most financial investors who tell you, hey, most of the time, if you put your money in just the S&P 500, you just throw it in there and let it sit and let it ride, you're gonna be completely fine. And yeah, statistically, there are certain time periods where you'd get absolutely obliterated but most of the time that doesn't happen, so you should be safe. Mark Spitznagel goes through cost-effective risk mitigation because we only get one shot at this. We don't get to live our life over and over and over again and then get the averages of all of those lives put together. We only have this one shot to end up with as large of a wealth stockpile as possible, which means that we need to make sure we are not exposing ourselves to those large losses. The stuff that I learned from Mark in this book, Safe Haven, is incorporated heavily into one of the courses inside Heresy Financial University in my portfolio allocation course. And I apply a lot of these lessons to help you protect your portfolio and your investments from large losses. The next book on the list is You Can Be a Stock Market Genius by Joel Greenblatt, which is just the cringiest title for a book that tries to teach you about investing. But this book is actually the book that Michael Burry read. And as a result of reading Joel Greenblatt's work, You Can Be a Stock Market Genius, genius, Michael Burry went on and founded his hedge fund that he went to short the housing market with before the great financial crisis. And Michael Burry specifically credits Joel Greenblatt with getting him started on learning how to invest. The next book on my list is the only fiction one, and I had to include a fiction one for those of you who love stories. And this one is Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. This is basically the capitalist manifesto. If you want a fictional book that highlights the truths of entrepreneurship and the ethical morality of building wealth and how to actually help and save the world, there is nothing better than Atlas Shrugged. Next book on the list is Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Chris Voss is an ex-FBI hostage negotiator, and this is my favorite book on sales. Sales is the ultimate safety net, and no matter what business you're in, if you can learn sales, you will make more money, even if you're not directly in a sales position, although I would recommend everybody getting into a sales position at some point in their life because that's gonna help you make more money than anything. And Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss teaches you actual applicable skills, tactics, and tricks that you can use to make more money in a negotiation, which is basically everything in life that has to do with money. And last but not least on our list is When Money Dies by Adam Ferguson. This details the story of what happened in the collapse of the Weimar Republic when they experienced all of the hyperinflation. And this one is key to understanding what happens when a currency fails, how it fails, and when you notice the symptoms, like everything that people do, how they buy and sell, how they save, how they preserve their wealth, it gives you the tools that you need to start preparing for that should that ever Hopefully not, but should it ever happen to you? And that concludes our list. Those 12 books, if I could only read 12 books ever again, I would actually choose those books and just read them over and over again because it's the perfect mix of business, sales, investing, money psychology, habit building, history, and philosophy. Every single one of these books is linked with an affiliate link in the description of the video below. And don't forget to sign up for Heresy Financial University using the annual plan with the code New Year new me to get 50% off in perpetuity. And once the code is used up, it will no longer work. So get after it, make this year a better year, start reading, just choose these 12 books, one a month, and you'll be well on your way to making more money and having a much more prosperous and successful life. As always, thanks so much. Have a great day.